I had no idea this would be so hard, but I can't turn back now. Speakers are great, but they also kind of suck. There's so many DIY speaker projects claiming to be amazing. Some are pretty good and most are pretty bad if I'm being honest. But what if I want something truly great? How about a set of free DIY speaker designs that are totally passive, suffer less from reflections, have deep powerful bass extension, a custom waveguide, and a custom crossover? Well, you know what they say, if you want something done right, sometimes you gotta do it yourself. Famous last words. Now, to 3D print a speaker, we need a great 3D printer. That's where this video's sponsor, Anchormake, comes in. I bought the Anchormake M5C back when I was prototyping the Omega headphone and fell in love with it. So when Anchormake reached out to sponsor a video, I was happy to say yes, but with a twist. I took their sponsor money and used it to buy another printer from them and fund this crazy project. A free, open source set of speaker designs for the community. So what's the goal with this speaker? Well, being in audio for as long as I have been, I'm pretty picky. I want a speaker that's thin enough to fit well on my desk next to my monitor, sits at just the right height without an additional stand, uses a speak-on connection, doesn't need DSP at all, and in general outperforms my JBL 306P Mark II. The LSR 306P Mark II is an acceptably performing speaker, which by the standards of the audiophile industry makes it exemplary. That's a really tall order, but I'm working with a great team and we have a lot of ideas. So what's first? Waveguides. To get the right directivity, we need to make a custom waveguide. Oh, and by we, I mean the two engineers helping me with this project, Blaine, also known as Mad Economist, and SC Gorg. I really want to make sure these guys are both credited properly because they are absolutely brilliant. Lucky for us, as long as we know the speaker's dimensions and parameters, we can simulate this all on a computer. So we started printing waveguide after waveguide, measuring them at different increments, and comparing the results of the simulations. When we landed on a design, we made this. This is one single huge piece we printed with no supports on the Anchormake M5C at 200 millimeters a second. Now the printer can do 500, but I opted for 200 for this. This is way bigger than what I've ever been able to print on any other printer. And with no supports too. I'm just, I'm giddy about this. Anyway, this piece is rock solid and now we can move on to the bottom half. Now, this is where things started to go wrong. I printed the bottom half, assembled the speaker, and it had no base. I wasn't really sure what had gone wrong. We ran the simulations, did the math, but it just sounded wrong. Why? Well, it was my fault. I printed the walls way too thin. So thin that you could do this. Yeah, uh, that's, that's not gonna work. Luckily, Quinn over at Snazzy Labs, thank you, Quinn. <clears throat> oh, I'm so thirsty. Stay snazzy. Was able to give me some great slicing advice. So this is the bottom shelf that I printed. I think I did three perimeter walls at 20% infill, but dude, this thing, I mean, it used almost a kilogram of filament. That's me pushing as hard as I can. I can barely get the damn thing to deflect. It is really strong. Then after a few tweaks, the Anchormake M5C printed this absolute tank of a housing. Seriously, this can hold my entire body weight and use an entire kilogram spool of filament to print. Uh, there is not going to be any base escaping out of this thing. I'm going to need Oratory 1990 to try and break it. It's shocking to me the size of the prints I've been able to get done from the M5C. You can basically use the whole print bed, which is kind of nuts, at least in my experience. From the day I got each of them, they were effortless to set up and let me pretty effectively use the entire print bed. From there, the size and quality of your print is all down to the slicer settings. Again, this is a sponsored video, but I've already purchased two of this printer, and I highly recommend it for how incredibly easy to use it is, and honestly for how cheap it is. So now we have all the parts ready, and all we have to do is assemble it, measure it, check, make sure things are consistent with the simulations, and design a crossover. Then, the designs will be posted for free for anyone to use in part two. Yep, it's a two-parter. I'm working on that one right now. Actually, by the time this video is published, I'm probably already halfway done with that video. So hopefully I'll see you guys in that one. Make sure you subscribe. But in the meantime, 
it wouldn't hurt to check out the AnchorMake M5C. If you want to print this project when it's done, that is probably the printer to do it on. You can check it out at the link in the video description, and honestly, they're fantastic for the price. Personal vouch, I'm very happy with the AnchorMake M5C. So if you like this video and you're excited for part number two, leave a like down below. Comment letting me know what you think about projects like this. What do you want to see me do in the future? Because I want to get more and more into open source free designs especially in the audio space. It's just fun. If you want to get active in the community, you can hit the Discord at the link in the video description. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until part two. Peace.